the U.S. federal government is the world's biggest buyer. And what does the government purchase from small businesses? Well, pretty much everything. Everything from business consultants to construction to bottled water to computers to clothing. If you're a service provider, maybe an accountant or a translator or an engineer, the government purchases just about every service there is. If you sell a product, I can tell you that many people make a good living as a middleman selling products from computers to bottled water to the government. No matter what you sell, you can probably sell it to the government if you know where to look. So have you avoided government contracting because you thought it was too complicated? Well, it's true that you need to learn the system, but it is a system. And once you learn it, you're good to go and the contracts can keep coming year after year. The good news is that you can learn the system yourself without the need to pay a consultant. There are a huge number of government websites that provide all of the information and market intelligence you need to get started and win government contracts. And this information is all free, but you have to know where to look for it. There's no magic to this. In this video, I'm going to walk you through a bunch of different government websites and resources and show you exactly how to access the information you need. Sound like what you're looking for? Click the subscribe button and let's get started. Federal government contracting is big dollars. The federal government spent about $500 billion on contracts last year, and more than one quarter of that was contracted with small businesses. That's over $130 billion a year that goes to small businesses, and that money has to go to small businesses. Large businesses cannot compete for that money. Now, each year, the government sets goals for contracts to be set aside for small businesses and for businesses in certain categories. Set-asides means that only those kinds of companies can compete for those kinds of contracts. And each year, the SBA releases its procurement scorecard, which shows how well the government did in meeting its, its goals. And what I'm showing you here is the FY 2019 procurement scorecard. I'm on the SBA website, and this is the FY 2019 Federal Procurement Scorecard. Now check this out. Small business contracting went from $90 billion in 2015 up to $132 billion in 2019. Small disadvantaged businesses received $35 billion in 2015, and that increased to over $51 billion in 2019. So there have been big increases in contracting dollars going to small businesses over just the past few years. When we compare the goals with how they actually performed, we see only one area where it didn't meet its goals, and that's HUBZone. So HUBZone certification might be something to put on your radar, because in past years, there's been an increase in the number of contracts in any category that was lagging behind its goal. Now, this is the website that gives you all the details on the federal small business contracting programs. I'm at the sba.gov website under federal contracting. And here you'll learn all about the women-owned small business program, service-disabled veteran-owned program, 8A program, and the hub zone program. Now, 8A is the name of the government's program for socially and economically disadvantaged companies. Let me show you some real interesting 8A numbers. Note that the number of 8A firms has been declining at the same time the federal 8A contract dollars has been increasing, and as a result, the average revenue per firm has tripled. If you qualify for 8A certification, I think this is a great time to get into the federal marketplace. Now, I mentioned HUBZone certification. To qualify for HUBZone certification, your principal office must be located in a HUBZone and at least 35% of your employees must live in a HUBZone. So we start at the HUBZone map website. And to get here, I just Googled HUBZone map. And we enter an address, do a search. And in this case, we're going to see that this address is in 
a qualified hub zone. Now, in addition to contracting directly with the federal government, you should also consider being a subcontractor to a prime contractor. In fact, that's how many companies get their start in federal contracting. When a large company gets a contract with the government, they are required to subcontract part of the work to small businesses. Now, I know that some consultants will offer you a list of large prime contractors, but I'm going to show you how to get that list for free yourself. You go to the beta.sam.gov website. We go under Data Bank. Here are the showing the reports for contract data. And under Report Type, I click Static. There are a whole bunch of interesting reports here. Here are the Small Business Goal Reports. But here are the top 100 contractor reports. And you click here, and you'll get that list yourself. So here's what that file looks like. It shows you government-wide, and for each particular agency, who are the top 100 contractors and the amount of money they received that year. So let's see how you would use this information. I went to the website for a large government contractor. I'm going to click on Opportunities and then procurement and contracting. And we can see they list current requests for proposals. They have a whole bunch of them. If you do graphics and technical editing support, they have a RFP right now. I am going to come over here and click on small business. So here's their vendor registration link. You'll always want to register with the company as a small business. Here are helpful small business links. Here they're providing a bunch of contacts and organizational charts with contact information. They'll pretty much always list a bunch of events, and you should definitely attend the events where the company is to get a chance to meet the people. On this page, they tell you what their goals are, and they tell you their contact information, the name, the telephone number, and the email address. Now, within the organization, there are several different levels you need to know about. There's the small business specialist, the program staff, and the contracting staff. And government prime contractors will always have a designated person for you to contact. It shouldn't be hard to find. The small business specialist is not a secret. You see, I just poked around the website and found it pretty easily. Contact this person, send her a capability statement that you've tailored to show what you can do for this company. Now, the small business specialist is your initial point of contact, but they're not the ones who make the contracting decisions. So you talk with the small business specialist and you ask them to make introductions to the contracting staff and the program staff so you can make the right connections. Then you talk with the contracting staff and the program staff to get more information about their requirements because the more information you have, the more competitive your proposals will be. Now, this website is fpds.gov, and it is a goldmine of information on government contracts. This website provides the details on all contracts awarded, so you can use it to find out who is buying the products and services that you sell, and you get this information at the level of the individual contracting officer that's making the purchase. You can search by the name of the contracting organization and see a list of all the contracts they've issued. Or you can enter the name of your competitor and see all of the contracts they've won and the amount of each contract. So let's say you're interested in a service contract. You can see when the current contract expires so you know when it will be up for rebid. You, you may find a contract that's expiring next year, and so you can start now marketing to the organization and developing that relationship so that you're considered when they rebid the contract. So how does this work in practice? Let's say you find a contract you're interested in that's expiring soon. You, you can call the small business specialist for the organization, and you do that and you say you get her answering machine. So you leave her a message, saying what your company provides. But you say, 
I see that last year your office issued five contracts for this, and one of those contracts is going to be up for renewal later this year. I would like to sit down with you and get a better understanding of your requirements and see if I might be able to help you with that. Here's my number, please call me. This shows them that you've done your homework. I know what you buy. I want to be one of your options for this. The small business specialist job is to find options, so she's going to want to talk to you. Then, when you speak with the small business specialist, you ask her to make introductions to both the contracting staff and the program staff, and then you speak with them, and you ask for more information about the requirement. Now, I'll enter a search to show you what the results look like. So there's a huge amount of information here, and you can search by the size of the contract, by the type of the project it is, by the way the contract was awarded. Did they use a particular small business program? Did they use GSA schedules? You find out how the individual contracting officer is making their purchases, and you can see their schedule, so you know when they'll be buying again. You can also get a lot of pricing intelligence from FPDS, to help you price your bid. So the work you're interested in is most likely a continuation of a previous requirement. You can find the previous contract here. FPDS will tell you who won the contract and how much they're being paid. Then you can call the contracting officer and ask them, has the scope of work changed? That will give you the information you need to price your bid. Let me show you a bit more about the information that's available here. FPDS lets you drill down and see the results of each individual funding action. And as you can see, there is a lot of information about each and every funding action that is issued. Now, there is another website, usaspending.gov, and some people like USA Spending, but personally, I prefer to go to the actual source data which is FPDS. Hey folks, if you're getting value from this, please hit the subscribe button. That really helps us keep bringing this free content to you. So the next website I wanna show you is Beta Sam. It's beta.sam.gov. And there's actually a huge amount of information on Beta Sam. Going through it all would take a whole nother video, but for our purposes right now, what I want to show you is that Beta Sam lists the contract opportunities. So I click Contract Opportunities here and hit Search. And what you see here is, well, they're showing here all of the contract opportunities, but you can filter it by a whole bunch of different criteria. In fact, you can add additional filters uh, beyond the ones that you see right here. Now, there are a few important things you can do in Beta Sam. First, you can specify your search criteria and set up a saved search and have the results of that search emailed to you each day. If you find a solicitation you're interested in, you can add your name to the interested vendors list. And then if the contracting officer is gonna have a pre-bid meeting, they may only invite the companies that are on the interested vendors list, so that's why that's important. Also, if you find a solicitation you're interested in, you should definitely add the solicitation to your watch list. Then, when they release a modification or add additional information, you will receive an email notification, and that is really important if you're planning to bid because Typically, there are changes, and you want to receive immediate notification of the change. Now, you can definitely use Beta Sam to search for upcoming solicitations, and you do that here under Type of Notice. But often, if you come across an opportunity at the solicitation stage, you're already late to the game. So I would encourage you to also look for sources sought. You want to find opportunities at the earliest stages where it's still possible to work with the government to shape the opportunity in your favor. And note, if you don't find the opportunity until the solicitation is released, you may not have enough time to do all the research and everything you need 
to put together the best possible proposal. On the other hand, if you find out about the opportunity earlier and sit down and talk with the small business specialist six months out, you have the time to get an understanding of the requirements and you have the time to do the work you need to prepare a winning proposal. For example, many times you may need that time to contact subcontractors or suppliers, and you'll probably get a better deal from your suppliers, better pricing compared with waiting until the last possible minute and contacting them for last minute pricing when you're up against a proposal deadline. So please start early and look also at sources sought, not just solicitations. Now, I really want to encourage you to attend matchmaking events where you can meet government buyers. And normally there are lots of these events and you can find them easily with some simple web searches looking for matchmaking events or industry days. Right now, of course, there are fewer events and they're virtual, but still they do exist. And I would encourage you to attend them because these meetings are a great way for you to start meeting people and make yourself and your capabilities known. At these meetings, you speak directly with small business specialists and contracting officers and learn about upcoming contracting opportunities, both directly with the government and as a subcontractor to a large government contractor. And also be sure to attend any pre-bidding meetings or walkthroughs or any other events that might be going on. Basically, take every opportunity you can get to speak directly with people and build those crucial relationships. Now, I mentioned at the start that there are people who will help you with all of this for free. Now, this organization here is PTAC, and they are a fabulous resource, and their help is free. PTAC will help you get registered to do business with the government, and they'll help you get certified. They'll help you search for contracting opportunities, and they provide workshops and matchmaking events that help you connect with government buyers. Now, the SBA also has offices across the country, and they also are here to help you, but if you're really just starting out, then I would go to PTAC first before the SBA. So if you're now ready to get started, this website, sam.gov, is where you register your company to do business with the government. And I have a whole video devoted to how to get registered. Check the notes below for a link to that video. So thanks for sticking with me. As you can see, there's tons of competitive information available for you for free, as well as resources to help you get started. Hey folks, if you got value from this, please like the video and hit the subscribe button. It really helps us to build the channel and keep creating these free videos for you. And leave a note in the comments if there are any deep dive topics you'd like me to cover in future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.